welcome back to another video this one I'm really excited about I'm gonna just put a disclaimer up in that I'm not perfect and I'm definitely a shopping addict and definitely trying to always keep a hold on my shopping habits and slow down but I do think that along with the fact that nobody's perfect we can all do a little bit better. So let's see if I can inspire you to think a little bit differently about the way that you shop. I recently had the most fabulous experience. I got to launch the rework shirts that I make in a store in London. I, up until now, have been selling them online via my own personal website. I'm so excited to have them in a store where people in and around the London area can actually go and try them on and find their perfect one. I found that when I was packing, I really fell back on the most classic items in my wardrobe. As much as I wanted to be creative and take the opportunity to really dress up and show up, I ended up packing my general everyday items that I wear all the time. Of course, this was my rework shirts. All in all, the two days that I was there, I wore classic outfits. Whether it was a t-shirt and linen trousers, or my rework shirts or men's oversized shirts that I always fall back on, I ended up in my wardrobe heroes. Now, as I said, the disclaimer in the beginning, before I was going to the event, I had an all fall down and decided that I absolutely had to have something new. None of the bottoms in my wardrobe were good enough to pair with my vacation shirt. And I quickly ordered something online. A pair of crochet knitted trousers with fringing on the bottom. I got them, I put them on, and although they were okay, I just felt like I didn't need this jazzy pair of trousers in my wardrobe. I could easily just go with a pair of jeans, a pair of my favourite trousers, or being that the week was so hot, I packed some shorts. I took a few classic pieces like that with me and decided I'd choose the bottoms on the day, see how I feel just before going to the event. This kind of thing happens all the time where I think, oh, I need something new. Oh, I gotta have something fresh. But in reality, once we start practicing the things that we love to wear, we realize there's really no need for new, unless you absolutely have a gap in your wardrobe. You're gonna look and feel your most confident at an event, at a special occasion, in falling back on those things that make you feel like your best self. I look back on images from the evening or video footage from the evening, and I don't feel like my outfit was that amazing or wasn't that creative. I wore a pair of shorts that I made myself and a shirt that I rewrote myself, but it felt like me, I felt super comfortable. That's a roundup on my first point, is that when you're about to shop, stop, drop and roll. <laughs> Just stop and have a think. Once you get the thing, are you gonna wear it with a lot of pieces in your wardrobe? Is it actually gonna pull some heavy weight and do a lot of hard work for you? Or are you just feeling the need to have something new because it's a special occasion? In that respect, I would say, buy a new nail polish color, buy a new lipstick or maybe a small accessory, or get creative with your styling. Don't default to just purchasing something new. Purchasing on the spur of the moment is likely gonna to lead to something that you're gonna end up returning, or maybe wearing once and then having to resell. The second point that has really made me think lately is that surrounding yourself in good company really can help curb your shopping habits and your unnecessary purchases or at least allow you to be more confident in your purchases. At this launch event, I was chatting to the owner of the store and she was telling me about her sandals that she absolutely had to buy. After a customer had walked into the store in them, she asked them where she got them from. I think they were from the Australian brand A. Emery. Fabulous black leather sandal. And she saw this on the person, was able to talk to her, ask her about them, and know whether they were gonna be a good purchase or not. It's like one-on-one -on -one marketing, I guess, without the brand's involvement. But you're gonna get a personal review, see them with your own eyes, and if you around fashionable people that have similar style to you, I feel like there's a lot of chance of this happening. But being in good company and surrounding yourself with these types of people, you're more inclined to find out about good brands or things that you could purchase that you would really wear for a long time because somebody else has worn it for a long time and you can really use their opinion to guide you with what you're next going to purchase. 
And I'll be honest, I have a very small circle, so I'm not always among people with the exact same style as me or that wear things that I would want to purchase or that would inspire me. But you can do this by getting going with some online relationships. You can really DM people and sometimes they reply and really give you an honest opinion about something that they've got. Ignore marketing maybe and just wait and just live a little and see when those moments come about where you find something that you you love on someone and then you can really make a more considered decision and you'll know whether this is something that you're going to wear for a really really long time the main point number three a big one shop small people shop small but make a massive difference not only do I feel very attached to this idea because I am running a small fashion business and so each sale or purchase means the world to me and literally is so encouraging to a small business to really want to continue. If you commit to trying to make more of your purchases in person, so at an independent store or at a retailer that you really believe in, that really inspires your personal style, you're going to slow down because you can't just be shopping at two o'clock in the morning online. You're going to have to be there in person and have the time for that. But especially in an independent store, there's also someone's small business. And it is a big deal to want to open up a space and stock brands that make a difference, that are curated and having someone there on hand to really guide you with your purchasing, to really talk to you about personal style. This is invaluable. And going to this launch event, putting my stuff in a pavement store in London, really, really just reminded me of how important that is. Of course, for me as a small business, like I said, but important in general and can really allow you to purchase things that you're going to love, that have a story attached to them. While I was there, I was inclined to purchase a bag from Isla Degas. She's a London-based handbag and accessories designer. I was taken by it because the store owner had displayed it in the window with one of my shirts and I just thought, you know what, I'd love to mark this occasion with something special, a little treat to myself, something that I really love, that I'm buying spare of the moment, but that I know I'm going to get a lot of use out of. Since buying the bag, I went back on Instagram and got back in touch. I tagged her in a picture. She sent me a lovely message. She then found out about my shirts. She asked if I was going to be at the next event at Pavement Store. So this new little form of connection came about. And this is something that you just don't get when you're shopping online with a larger retailer. This personal kind of effect that really makes you feel good about your purchase. You can actually talk to the designer, the owner of the business, like where in the world does that actually happen? It's a no-brainer to me now that I'd rather save my pennies for those moments when I'm in person in a store, I can make a purchase that means something and that's going to have a story and a memory attached to it. To slow down and shop in this way, of course, takes time and you're really going to have to put some restraint on yourself. If, like me, you really, really love to shop, something that's really helped me is to create loads of wish lists. You'll have this list to draw on when you are in a store in person, not wanting to make a mistake because sometimes it can be overwhelming when you're used to shopping online and being able to return and that kind of thing. You'll know that if you see something that is on your list, you can guilt-free purchase it because you are in fact looking for that item. It takes preparation, it takes a lot of effort, but as we're learning or as I've learned and I'm telling you via these videos, a great style or a seamless wardrobe or getting dressed and putting fabulous looks together easily and not being bored of your wardrobe does take effort, it does take time. I think we do have to give ourselves these little tips and tricks, rules if you want to say that can really keep us in check and allow us to slow down and think more critically about what we're adding into our wardrobes. And that is what I have for you on the topic of how to change up your shopping habits. I really just wanted to do, use the moment that I'm in. It's only about two weeks since that event happened and I was so inspired by it. And I thought this fits in really well. If we're going to sort out our wardrobes at some point, we're going to want to shop and update them. So all I can say, or at least hope for myself, is that going forward I continue to keep myself in check and shop more responsibly. If you like this video give it a like and definitely subscribe. I will see you for another episode soon. Bye!